coming to you today from my office in exile. Uh, this is on the northwest side uh, of our education wing, overlooking the uh, beautiful courtyard that has been uh, tidied up by Tom and Susan Terry and Tony Fitzgerald this week, and we're really appreciative, uh, appreciative of them. But I call this my office in exile. Uh, when we came to uh, the time of uh, quarantine and to uh, social distance, I moved up here. I'm not here this, a lot of the same time that Marguerite is, but uh, it's just easier uh, to be up here. And I'm so thankful to the church to have this, uh, this office already outfitted. This was actually uh, intended for uh, the youth minister, Lindsay, uh, with her job at the school and different things, isn't able to use this office, but it's set up and, and uh, ready to go. And uh, obviously there's an office down the hall upstairs uh, as well. Uh, but I've chosen uh, to be up here and really enjoy to be able to, uh, to use, use the space. That term, office in exile, obviously is a little over dramatic. We are not in exile as the uh, uh, Jewish people were uh, in the Old Testament on a couple of occasions. Uh, it is not to that extent. We are not in exile as uh, the uh, audience of uh, Peter uh, in uh, First and Second Peter that we're looking at, uh, First Peter that we're looking at right now. Uh, we're not in that same kind of exile as they were uh, driven out because of persecution uh, of their faith and apart from their homeland uh, because of that. But there is uh, kind of a feeling. First Peter 1 uh, 17, which we're going to look at in just a minute, the word uh, that's sometimes translated exile or foreigners in the land is actually sojourn. Uh, the idea that we're on in a different place at a, at a different time. And there's a lot uh, about this time that feels that way. We're in an interesting uh, position now where some things are opening back up and each of us individually are trying to make the decision what is uh, best for our health, but even perhaps equally as importantly, or in some ways more importantly, what is better for the health uh, of others uh, in getting out and, and those kind of things. Things are uh, sort of opening up, and we as a church, uh, as a community of believers, have to make uh, that decision and, and just really feel like right now, at this moment where we stand uh, right now, it is just continuing best for us to um, have these online services and have uh, those opportunities and and kind of stay out of the building uh, for uh, for the time being. We'll continue to look at that and continue to evaluate that, but uh, that 1st of May uh, opening for many things in our state uh, will not uh, most likely pertain uh, to us. Uh, we'll continue to uh, have the online uh, component, but continue to watch and, and listen, and we'll get that, uh, get that word out. But that idea of sojourn, of of being in a different place, I think is definitely something uh, that we can relate to. And as Peter writes to those who are literally uh, in exile, literally uh, displaced, and encourages them in their faith, I think that we can see and hear some encouragement uh, as well. Let's look at that First Peter 1, uh, 17. I'll just read it for us. If you have a, a copy of Scripture at home or access to that, uh, you might want to do that as well. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, Live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have a sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been again, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. So he says, because you are in this place, and because you are in this time, and because you still want to follow God, live in reverent fear. And there's lots of discussions about. I didn't think we were supposed to be afraid, but we're supposed to fear God. And many of you have heard those uh, discussions back and forth. The idea of reverent fear is not an afraid. It's not a scare. It is a respect and a reverence and a dependence upon the holy God who has called us to himself. And so now we live. We've got to keep on living. And how do we do it? He reminds them of their condition of their condition under God because of the saving work of Jesus Christ. You were not saved by stuff. You were not saved by your routine. 
You were not saved by your homeland. You were not saved by those creature comforts. You were saved by imperishable things. He's not demeaning those things. But those things, silver and gold, as he mentions, fall away. But the imperishable things by which we were redeemed, by which we are saved, by which we are established, the faith and hope that we have in Christ, those things do not change. Those things are immovable. We are set on those things. You have been liberated. That word translated ransomed or redeemed can also mean liberated. You are free. Even though you right now, whoever you are that I'm talking to, even though you feel confined, even though in some ways you feel uh, literally uh, shut down perhaps, and you're antsy to, to break from that, know that in things that matter, you are free because you have been purchased, you have been liberated in that sense by the Christ who loves you and, saved, and has saved you and called you uh, to himself. A lot of times people want to be liberated and freed for things and by things that are imperishable, or that are perishable, I'm sorry, that break down, that don't uh, really last. We just want to get out and do because we can, out and, because we can and, and ultimately those things don't satisfy either. Remember that we are free, that we are liberated by Christ and by a hope and faith that are imperishable, that won't break down. Because of that, because of that liberation and that redemption by a God who, by a God who doesn't fade away, by a faith and hope that is sure and that is set, you matter. You are important. When we feel isolated, when we feel out of our routine, when we don't get to see people that we have gotten to see some for years, and, and we don't get uh, the comforts of, our, of, of normalcy that we have come uh, to be accustomed to, uh, sometimes we, we get down. And, and I think that happens to all of us in different degrees. But know that in Christ you matter. Because He matters. And because He took the things that matter, faith and hope, and solidified them in His life, death, and resurrection. Know that you matter because of what matters. You are loved. He says, now that you have been purified, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, this love comes from the love that we've experienced in Christ. And so I want you to hear and I want you to know that there are people who love you and care about you. You've heard from some of them and you haven't heard um, from some of them perhaps, but know that you are loved and know that above all, God loves you. And you are secure in Him and can be secure in Him by sticking to that truth of what He's done in the life, death, and resurrection, of what He has called you to. You are loved. And so what do we do in response? We have that sincere love for each other. The end of verse 22, love one another deeply from the heart. Continue to care for one another. For those friends you've had for years, for those friends you've had for just a small time, for those people that you don't even really know, but that you might recognize uh, the name, care for one another. Many of you have had and taken the opportunity to care for others through our mobile food pantry, uh, through recognizing doctors and nurses, through making masks, through sending out cards and letters, making phone calls and sending out emails and posting uplifting and encouraging things on Facebook. Continue to do that. And, and don't neglect what should be for us as Christians the obvious. Don't neglect the gift of prayer. That somebody might not ever know that you specifically prayed for them. But they know the effect of that. And they know the presence of God uh, that comes in as someone takes, intercedes on their behalf to, uh, through the Holy Spirit that intercedes for all of us, laying those requests before the Lord. Uh, I believe that God answers that and that God honors that. So a great way to love and care for one another is to pray for one another. Hold on to that deep, that deep-rooted love that you have for your brothers and sisters in Christ. It comes out of that imperishable truth that saves us, that teaches us that we matter, that we are loved, and it prompts us and it empowers us and it urges us and encourages us to show that love for others. In a very practical way to 
practice that. I want us to pray for uh, some needs. There are lots of needs uh, in our church and, and around us. And, and some of those we've been praying for for a long time. And I pray that you'll continue to do those, to do that. I want to pray for those that we know that are in nursing homes and those that we and that have loved ones in nursing homes and assisted uh, living facilities. This is a tough time uh, of isolate, of even greater isolation for them in some ways. Uh, so pray. We want to pray for those victims of the tornado in Medill, for their families. We want to pray for the family of Mark Borum, who passed away suddenly this week. Many of you will remember Mark was the music minister here for a time, and uh, a lot of people in our church have a long uh, friendship and with, uh, with Mark, but we want to pray for his family. We want to pray for the family of Andy Hatch. This is the son-in-law of Bobby Canty, married to his oldest daughter, Sean. And uh, we've been praying for Andy before, and Andy, Andy died this week, so we want to pray uh, for his family. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we lift up those families in Medill. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them uh, in what is a difficult, difficult time and, and just complicated by the circumstances that we're at, that we're in. We pray, Lord, for them. Pray for the family of Mark Borum. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to show um, some love to his family. And, and, Lord, we just pray that they might know your presence in what is a difficult time. In many ways, Lord, in the same way, we pray for uh, the family of Andy Hatch uh, in, in confusion and frustration. In the pain, God, we pray that they might know your presence and peace. It's in the strong name of Jesus I pray.